What is LVT? So LVT is luxury vinyl tile. It's also commonly known as LVP, which is luxury vinyl plank. Uh, what we're standing on here is luxury vinyl plank. In most cases, it has a, a wood aesthetic, and um, there's been a ton of benefits for both commercial construction, retail, residential construction, because it's super durable. It has a fairly inexpensive buy-in rate for manufacturers to produce products at a large scale. Whether or not you're deciding on LVT or LVP for a specific application, it's always part of the conversation because it can go anywhere. The performance value is through the roof. You have great aesthetics. You have a product that can perform in any kind of environment, and you have a product that installs at a budget that most people can afford that are looking to uh, do any kind of a renovation or, or a upgrade to their space. What is LVT made of? The LVT is made of PVC. PVC is plasticizers and plastics that have a pliability that allow the products to move and function really well in a multitude of environments. There's also a category that has become very, very popular in the last five years. Its common name is Rigid Core. It's also called Engineered Vinyl Plank, and that has multiple different layers uh, with different products. This one, for example, has your top coat or your veneer or the vinyl layer with a, with a commercial finish over the top. It has a rigid core, and it has an attached underlayment that's cork. How are Rigid Core and Loose Lay different? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Well, we have, we have the loose lay here, which is very pliable, which help to, helps to work with um, really poor subfloors. And then you have the floating systems in this engineered vinyl plank that has the rigid core, which is ex exactly that. It's, uh, you know, it's fairly rigid with some pliability to work for with minor imperfections in subfloors. In what applications is LVT ideal? LVT is actually ideal for a ton of applications. This product class has really taken hold across, of the, across the construction world at um, a price that's gonna fit most budgets for anybody who's looking to do any kind of a renovation or upgrade to either their office, their apartment, or any kind of a, any kind of a retail space. How is each type of LVT installed? You know, so we, we call this five millimeter thick vinyl plank a loose lay, but there's, <clears throat> there's a ton of benefits to the installation because of the versatility. It can be loose laid as manufactured. It can also be perimeter glue slash loose laid, which means that you have glue going around the perimeter to lock in the planks like a picture frame, and then it allows all of the other floated planks to sit in their place, you know, without having the opportunity to, to spread or to move. This can also be fully glued down, which is what's happening here because the subfloor had a ton of issues. The engineered vinyl products are really beneficial in several different areas. You know, one of the biggest that I can think of is with minimal floor prep, you can go over the pre-existing finished floors with this new finished product and it eliminates the need to have any kind of demo. The reason you can loose lay this product is because it is a click. So what, by click, what I mean is you have a locking mechanism that, that floats over the subfloor or the plank floats over the subfloor and then you have an adjacent plank that clicks into it, locking both planks together. You expand that over a large space where all of the planks are connected as one. They swell as one, they shrink as one, and there is no need to glue them to the subfloor at all. We always talk about subfloor prep with floating systems like this. It's very important to have your subfloor within a flooring tolerance it's generally going to be an eighth of an inch every 10 feet. I feel that these products work really well when you have either rectangle or squared up open spaces and you have the opportunity to have expansion space around the edge to allow the product to move, to expand and contract throughout the seasons depending on the humidity levels. Now this is not to be confused with loose lay products that are on the market that also have the opportunity to be glued down. In this case we have a five millimeter thick, very heavy LVT floor, seven inches wide and what happens here is you put it down, there's so much mass, there's so much weight to it, it does not need to be glued down. However, in some scenarios, it's probably prudent to glue the floor down to ensure that it doesn't move, it stays stable, you have a long life cycle. The biggest advantage that I see with the square edge loose lay is that it's not connected the same way that the click floors are. <laughs> and what, what, what I mean by that is it's situational. For example, if I were to have a problem with this square edge loose lay plank right here in the middle of the space, I can come in with a carpenter's knife, a mechanic's knife, and I can pull this singular plank off the floor with doing minimal damage to the adjacent planks. And then I can replace a plank right in the middle because a square edge is acting, acting independent of all of the surrounding planks. 
floating click system, again, because it is attached to the adjacent plank on both sides, the top and the bottom of the head seams. So to replace this plank in the middle of a field means I'd have to cut it out. It happens often, more complicated. This is why we pro-con all of these options with end users, with designers, to come up with the best solution for a particular application. How are they each maintained? Overall, the maintenance is gonna be the same. You know, in most cases, you're gonna use a pH neutral cleaner. Uh, it's gonna either be, be mopped or swept on, and then it's gonna be dried. You know, the biggest thing is just not to leave the floors wet. Some products on the market are considered waterproof, and that's, that's great. The challenge is, though, you don't want to get any kind of moisture stay for a long time where it's seeping through seams and then living in the subfloor. How do the costs compare? So the, you know, the overall cost is going to normalize itself. When I say normalize, it would be even out over the installation, the adhesive, and then the labor. The planks here, if you are using a glue, are going to go down very quick. And then, you, but you have to spread adhesive, right? So it's a two-part process. With the floating engineered vinyl construction, there's no adhesive required, and you're just snapping the floor together. And so it's a one-step process, but the construction of the actual product, the material, will cost a bit more than the, than the glue-down products. What is embossing? So, so embossing is the texture that is ingrained into the, um, the urethane wear layer that's on top of LVT planks. That ure urethane wear layer, you know, of course, hel helps to protect the floor. So it's vital there, but it also provides a big aesthetic push and a bonus. The planks that we're standing on here have what's called a registered and embossed. That means that the texture actually mirrors the look of the grain that's under it. If you were to look down and look closely, and then you'll see that, that the texture is actually matching that cathedraling in the, in the grain of the um, wood plank. Um, there's also texture that does not match the grain, and then the metal product would be, would be what we commonly call as ticking. And that's generally a slight texture that's put on top of base grade LVT planks um, that give a little bit of a realistic look, but you can't go too deep because that urethane wear layer is significantly thinner than what we're standing on here in this thick commercial wear layer. Budget provided, or, or I guess budget be gone, I would always prefer to see uh, an embossed and registered finish. How do you pick between all the options? You know, I think you hit on it by all the, when you said all the options, because there are so many options, not just from a product standpoint, but there's so many options and variables in the field. Um, my pro tip would be to ask as many questions as possible prior to giving a recommendation for a, pro for a product. All projects are not created equal. They all have their own challenges and you know, their, their unique um, attributes. The aesthetic, the budget, the overall performance need, and then the ecological impact. As a gross generalization, those are the four most important aspects that go into a decision. Each market segment may, may prioritize it in a different order. At a company like ours, at Spartan Services, we're in a unique position because we have such a diverse portfolio of product. When I walk in, I have the ability to listen to um, end users and clients, you know, designers, librarians in a lot of cases too, um, in architectural firms. Because we have so many products, I'm not walking in pushing a ceiling fan saying there'll be a great flooring product. It's just not the case. You know, we can really listen and consult and pro-con our own products in our own portfolio to ultimately get to the best product for a project. Where do I get help? <laughs> Please feel free to visit us at spartanservices.com with any questions, comments, concerns. Um, come check out our website, check out our references, product portfolio, and we would love to help you out with future projects. Thank you.